Most of the great ideas, they came to people's minds after struggling and suffering for too long. It was almost the same during the whole humanity history. First, we found or we face a problem, we struggle to find a solution, and when we find it, we make our life much easier. Even in the worst cases like the war, if the person thinks positively, he can change things for better and he can rescue his life and other people's lives. The good point about suffer, it can make you see things what other people can't see, and then you can see the solution easier than the other people. It was almost the same thing for me. Before I came to Germany, I was living for five years during the Syrian crisis. It was just a horrible experience living in war. It's so hard to talk about it now. But I will tell you about one of the biggest fears I always had. It's being disconnected and isolated from the whole world for days, weeks, sometimes for months. I always still remember in 2013, there was a place only 10 kilometers far from the center of Damascus where I live. It was disconnected for five months. A lot of my best friends and my closest relatives are living there. And I was checking every day one single message to know if they are still alive or not. It was one of the hardest experiences in my life. After I came to Germany, I met so many other international friends. They shared with me the same feeling. They told me, we suffer sometimes for weeks to receive only one single message from our parents to know if they are good or not. I tried to see if our problem is only our problem, and then I found out, sadly, it's not only ours. There are, in the moment, 17 countries living under like big conflicts or wars. There are 60% of the world population, they don't have proper internet access. It means maybe they struggle every day to make one single call. I started to imagine if we can make our WhatsApp work offline, even if we are disconnected, if we can make phone calls and send text messages, even if the internet connection and the network of the mobile is it's down. And I was thinking about if we, the human, can use the old way as postmen do and send the messages using our technologies in our pockets with our smartphones. And I was thinking about the most two available things in our devices, which is the sound, our speaker, and the microphone in our phone, and the light in the flashlight and the camera, which can see the light. And then I found out, yes, we can transfer some data using those both things. I will show you some past thing. I wrote on my phone SOS, and I want to send it to you over sound, and it will look like this. So this is the SOS message decoded in sound, and then we can send it in ultrasound, so our ears will not hear it, but your phones can, and they can receive the same message. And you will all be warned that I have urgent thing to know. The other thing is, using the simply the flashlight, you all see it, and then if you spot your phone in front of my flashlight, you can receive the same SOS message. This is just a very simple idea of how we can transfer data using in some alternative solutions. I will try to explain my idea in more details by telling you two solutions I found them out. The first one is broadcasting the data to everybody around me for sending SOS messages and urgent news. It means only some very important things I want to tell. I will use the light and the sound as I showed you. And the other thing is I want to keep using all the technologies in my phone as the internet do. So we can use something called mesh networking by using the Wi-Fi direct and the Bluetooth. I will explain in more details how we can do that. So if we have those two devices, they will be connected using all the available technologies in the devices. I choose the Wi-Fi Direct and the Bluetooth to build the network. And we can use the ultrasound and the flashlight to send the urgent news and the SOS messages. And we can use NFC to change the data if two persons get in contact. So if we have a city where, for example, three devices are close to each other, the first one will broadcast the data to the closest one, which will broadcast it as well to be received by the third. So let's see if we have the city now, what we can do. We have this person who have his device in the city, and he wants to send a message to someone else, or something really urgent happening in the area. So all what he has to do is sending it to the closest person who's close to him, who will broadcast it as well to everybody around, till it will be received to as many people as he can. What if we want to send it to the other side of the city? People always moving around, riding bikes and driving cars, they will hold the messages with them and they will broadcast it as well whenever they go. 
So it means I will hold the message and I will take it with me. Everybody will receive it the same way. So then the whole city will receive the information, which is urgent and should be everybody know about it. What if I want to send it to the other side of the world? Everybody know in my city, but in other countries or states, nobody know about these horrible things happening in this, in this area. Whenever somebody gets connected in this city, to the internet, he will send all these urgent news to someone also connected and have the same technology on his phone, and he will receive the same information. It will be also broadcasted there in the same way, and then nothing will be hidden anymore. Everybody will know if there is something horrible happening. I will try to speak in more details how we can use each of them to solve real problems. The first one is broadcast the information or the data. So how we can solve this problem using the same technology? If we have this neighborhood, we have something dangerous happening in the street. It's enough for only person to see it from the window. He can start using the light or the ultrasound to tell all the other buildings. Using the light, he can tell the building next to it. They will know about it. Or he can use the ultrasound to broadcast the SOS message to everybody around it. So even the buildings which is far from the street, they will know that there is something happening here and they should not go out. And then the man will be rescued. This is just a very simple case where we can use this thing and believe me, it can really rescue a lot of people's lives, especially the people who suffered from this issue in some war countries, they will understand it so well. Sometimes you see the this, this stuff, there's something horrible happening, but you can't tell it because you can't shout loudly. And then you can use the ultrasound and all your neighbors will receive the message. Also, when the internet connection or the mobile signal is not working anymore. Another situation, I called it the people network, where we can build the network using ourselves. We will not rely on routers, on um, uh, satellites or um, towers who broadcast the data. We will just, we, the people, create the network. A few weeks ago, there was a disaster happening in Italy, and there was an earthquake. It was so painful that um, there is a mom and her son. They are lost, and there are only two streets far from each other. None of them was able to communicate because the internet and the network is down after the disaster. And both of them have smart devices, but it's worthless because they can't communicate. So how we can solve such a problem if it's happening again? If we have this city, and here is the mom, and she wants to send the message to her son. So here is the mom, and here is the son. And they want to send the message or anything just to know if they are good or not. And they can't now because there is no internet and there is no mobile signal. So the solution is by building the network by people themselves. So every person will be connected to the next to him. So I will be connected to the first person in this hall who will connect it to the end of the hall, to the person in the street, and then the whole city will be connected the same way. So every person will be connected to the surrounding per people, and they will be all building the network, and we will use it as a bridge. So every person will deliver the message to the next person. And then the mom now can send the message to her son, and they will be communicating. If they are connected in this chain, they will be do it online. If not, it will take time till we receive it, but it will be received in the end. And then they can send the message, and they will be also rescued. You can think about so many other situations. It could be in one building, in the placement there is some colleagues who don't have connection, but the ones in the first floor they have. So they can use their, each other connection to communicate, to send emails or whatever. I call this project the Freecom, and I believe that it can bring free freedom for the community because it will be build a free communication. It will build a free connection. Privacy is a very important thing for us. And using this system, everything will be secure. I will send a message through you, but you will not see it. Only the deliverable person, he will see it. I hope this technology is not still as an app as I do it now. I hope in the future it will be featured in our devices. As we turn on the Wi-Fi, as we turn, off the, turn on the Bluetooth, we can turn, off, turn, we can turn on this technology and communicate with everybody around us. In my opinion, this technology can solve a lot of problems, and I could encourage all the mobile industry and the big iOS systems companies to start thinking about a solution like this because our phones are really worthless if we don't have the internet or the mobile signal. Thank you so much.